Hi everybody. Hopefully you can see me now. Um, really nice to see you all here, or to, to hear that you're here um, again. Um, I thought last week went really well. I've just got a little starter slide for you there. So this is a model, one of my students made of a poem. So can anybody tell me which poem they think it is before I turn on to the next slide? Let's see if anybody can. I know the people internally know. Yeah, the prelude, that's it, excellent. And actually, the little boat moves along on the string, as you can see, so it gets further um, away from the mountain or towards the mountain, and around the side were lots of um, quotations, etc. Um, just to let you know who's here with us today, we've got Liz from um, and Pam from Pearson's, and they're going to um, help out. Pam is the one who deals with all your emails and all your submissions, and we've got a lovely uh, resource already that somebody sent in that we're going to share later on. So she's the person for that, and she's going to be in the breakout rooms later on. I've also got Liz from Pearson's, and she's going to talk you through, just one second, she's going to talk you through an off-qual op updates um, slide. Okay, so here we go. Over to you, Liz. Hello everyone, hopefully you can hear me. Um, just to start off um, by sharing these links with you, um, I'm sure many of you have got questions about the awarding and the grading for the summer. So um, just to let you know that in the top link, um, there are um, a lot of FAQs there for you to have a look at afterwards about how the assessment will work in the summer. Um, and also I'm sure you're aware that um, Ofqual have released a consultation to seek views on GCSE and A-level grading proposals for this summer. So um, if you want to contribute to that, um, you can click on the second link there. Um, the, the consultation is open until 11.45 p.m. on the 29th of April. That's next Wednesday. Um, so do contribute to that. Um, and we will, of course, do our best to answer any questions that you have today. Um, but we do, again, have lots of new content to focus on during the meeting. So feel free to ask your questions. But a lot of, a lot of the information and the most up-to-date information that we have um, will be in that top link. And then, as I said, consultation in the second link. OK, thank you, Julie. Thanks. OK, thanks. Lovely. Right, back to the slides then. We, we just, I'm just going to tell you, talk you through the agenda. Uh, check in in a moment. We're just going to have a quick update from everybody. Um, I'll give you a quick feedback on what I'm planning to do this time and what I'm going to do next time. Then I'm going to go through some online resources, best of the week, and then language ideas, then literature ideas. Um, one thing I, want, I haven't put on the next slide, but perhaps I'd like you to think about is whether it would be better going forward if we did language one week and literature the next week. Um, I'm only just a little bit scared I might run out of good ideas. Um, but no, seriously, that might be a better way to do it. So if you could perhaps comment on the next slide about that. And then after that, we're going to have our tea break. We're going to have time to discuss, share, and, and soothe each other, maybe. Um, now we're all back at school. Perhaps it's getting a bit more panicky. It's getting a bit more real, this um, online learning stuff. So a chance to share ideas. So let's just go to that now, if we can go to these two questions that we're going to answer. Thank you. So if you'd like to go ahead and put um, your ideas in there, what or who has got you through this first week back? And have you used anything from the last webinar? We would like to know. Thank you.
Oh, okay, if we move on then, it looks like everybody's given um, quite a good um, summary there of what's got them through it. Um, and also a lovely thing to see people have used the resources, uh, some of the resources anyway from last week. I know some people said shame they couldn't get on last week. I'm sure these are shared and I'll try and find out um, before the end of the webinar where they're shared and how you can get access to the resources from the last weeks. Okay, let's move on then. Feedback then from last week. Um, further teaching resources, which I hope I'm going to help you out with. Adult learning. Um, I have got something that could be used for any age, but I did really pitch it to adult learning this week. I've also gone for a high ability, a high ability idea, or the higher end of it, and also help with exam question resources, hopefully. So I'm going to give you some ideas on those. So they were four things that were asked for several times. Also, next week, I'm going to try and focus on the more lower ability uh, resources for lower year groups. Some people asked for um, key stage three resources, and I have got a couple of things actually, so I'm going to share those next week. Um, somebody's just said actually they like the idea of focusing on language one week and lit the next. Um, so if that's the case, if that's the, the consensus towards the end, I think we might start doing that and maybe start with language next week, and then we could perhaps just do 45 minutes, which is probably easier now you're back teaching. Um, and you've got families to deal with. Um, shout out for help. Somebody asked for remote anything remote learning for Lord of the Flies, and I must admit it's a book I love, but I haven't actually taught it, and I don't have anything in my armory for that. So I wonder if anybody does have anything that even they could send or share that could be adapted for that. Um, so I've just put that shout out for somebody. I'm not sure who it was, but they asked for that in the feedback. Um, people seem to be saying that they would like a language in lit. It does seem to be coming through now in the open discussion, so I think that's possibly something we'll, well, I think we'll almost definitely go with that, and we'll go for um, language one week, lit the next, and that might help with numbers as well, because there are, I know some people um, that haven't been able to get on, I think we've got 65 with us today, but um, I heard from several people who couldn't get on in time, so that might help out. Right then, let's get to online resources. I've had a good look around the Twitter sphere and elsewhere for you this week. And just to remind you there that um, Claire, who's there, anytime you need her and is good to follow on Twitter. Um, now, this is a lovely, lovely lady. I'm not sure if she's with us today, but it's a teacher who makes these absolutely gorgeous resources. She does it on an iPad. Um, on some kind of art program. They're absolutely beautiful. But she did offer on Twitter, and I asked her before I put her on here, and um, I asked her whether she'd, she'd mind being shared. So there's her um, Twitter handle. So if you follow her on Twitter, you can see she makes these beautiful resources. And it's certainly something that I think um, we're going to look at in terms of Pearson resources, because they're beautiful. So there you go. There's some inspiration there. And she shares the Lady Macbeth one is shared, and it has an exam question across the bottom. So she shared that on Twitter already very kindly. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, I think that's Jennifer Ludd or Jen. Um, I don't think she could get on today. She did um, tweet me, but she's got lots of remote learning resources and she shares them very freely on Twitter. And she has a Dropbox and um, I think also a blog page, which is which is great. So if you follow her, that's really worth doing. Um, Lit Drive UK, I think I mentioned it last week, but just to let you know, I know some, several people have signed up for it. My school signed up for it as a department and I think it's just five pounds a year to access and it's well worth it, it's got loads of things and there's more online learning resources on there um, every day that I look so it really is well worth having a look to take the stress out of things. A lot of good people that I've mentioned like Stuart Pryke, they, they share on LitDrive. They also, you'll see that they've got the CPD, now they run, um, I think they have LitDrive coordinators across the country and the coordinators are responsible for running um, for running monthly or, or termly events, but obviously they can't do that at the moment, so they're going online, and starting this Saturday, they're the ones I think um, on the 25th is Macbeth, A Mind Diseased by Holly Wimbush, so it's worth looking on their, um, on their um, Twitter page because they, they'll be doing something every Saturday, so that will be brilliant. Okay, um, let's have a look, something came up there on the open discussion there. Is there a session on the 7th of May as well? Yes, I think there will be one weekly, so it'll be going forward on that. Um, okay, next page then. 
Um, this is a lovely thing I saw, and I did ask um, the teacher, and she said, yes, she was more than happy for me to share it. So there you go. Um, they've set, this is a school that set a weekly theme, and I thought that was a really lovely idea. This is perhaps more Key Stage 3, but I loved the idea. Um, so there you go, I've already moved into Key Stage 3 ahead of next week. Um, and the theme there is art, and there's a thinking, an oracy, a reading, and a writing class. So I really like that idea. And if you go on to Twitter, sorry, you keep, you keep um, throwing social media down at you, but it is a place for good sharing at the moment on a very live basis. And um, if you go follow her uh, Twitter handle, you'll find that she shared a, a lot more than that. That was just the art one that I copied for this week. Okay. Now a couple of um, ones from left field, and this will come up as a bit of a shock, is this one. I just had this idea, um, and it is perhaps more, it's come from sort of key stage two area. A lot of museums have gone online now because they, uh, because they um, obviously we can't go live. And this was one, this was a creepiest object one from one museum here. So if you do hashtag creepiest object, and this was one, and I just thought it was a prompt for creative writing across the key stages, really. I just really liked that one. And the next one, this was a fab one, and it links into last week, if you were with me last week, when I talked about biscuits. So what biscuit have you got? And what biscuit would you be, and why? And this is the Getty Museum Challenge. And it's really worth going to have a look anyway on the website, because people have recreated all the pictures um, whilst at home on lockdown, and there's some absolutely fantastic ones. But I just like that biscuit one. And again, it would make a good creative writing prompt, or indeed, um, Perhaps something bigger than that, perhaps something linked to lit. OK. So that was that. Um, now, video lessons. I'm sure a lot of you have perhaps tried. One thing I wanted to share with you was how easy it is actually just to add narration or audio to your PowerPoints. But that slide that's on at the minute is about video lessons. As you can see what it says about Loom. Have any of you used Loom videos for videos? No, I haven't either. I had a look at the website. It's really good, actually. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Yeah, so it's worth having a look at. It's always good to find out new things, isn't it, that you didn't use before? Should we move on to the next slide? I'm sure Julie will be back in a minute. These are the sort of times where we just never know what's going to happen, do we? OK, so as you can see, uh, she's putting up there, which is the best of the rest, which is the Royal Shakespeare Company. And that's really good. I think it's the Tempest, yeah. So have any of you ever sort of tried anything like that? Got your students to do things like that? They can always recreate it and then just... Send it to you or video it or whatever. It's quite it's quite a bit of fun to do when you're sort of you know in the situation we're at at the minute. Oh, and Donna was just saying the Globe are doing free streams at the moment. Yes, I heard about that. That's really good. Um, and how have you found? Have your students engaged with the free streams that are around at the minute and the sort of Shakespeare text? Because obviously they're usually quite challenging for some well for lots of children to engage with. So yeah, oh that's good. Brilliant. Yeah, the National Theatre, new uh, National Theatre, sorry, on YouTube. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, yeah. I mean, I like that when you've got the little legs and the uh, obviously that's Macbeth, the witches. So yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Um, National Theatre allowing free access. Yes, that's good. Let's see what else. Twelfth Night is on this week. Oh, brilliant! Oh, I'll have to watch that. Brilliant, excellent. Anybody? Any other tips about Shakespeare there? National Theatre. Ooh. So there's really some really excellent resources around at the moment for Shakespeare. It's great. Um, Globe Theatre, R and J. Oh, that's good. I didn't realise that was on there at the minute as well. Okay, lovely. Should we move on to the next slide, please? So language ideas and resources of the week. Uh, I'm going to have to move on again here. Right. So this is one that Julie, I know, has t was talking to me about earlier that she's used, which is really good. So structure, what order? So obviously, I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> this is about how to think about structure um, of writing a story and how stories work, really. And it's one of my favorite um, 
what happens next stories. Okay, so there's um, one, and then the next one. I like to show it in different parts like this, and then that one, and then that one. Now, in the classroom, I would use this. Um, I would use this by just showing them one by one and saying which one comes next and why. And it works really well for that actually, and they love it. Um, I, I usually start with the one of the of the dinner table, which is um, you know I, I usually would start like that and say what's happened, what happens next, and ask the questions. But it works really well for what structure in terms of writing. Actually, they can use this as a writing prompt. So they're just there really for you to use however you want. Um, and in terms of reading, a, both reading a story and writing a story, they can be accessed quite easily um, and used in the classroom, should you wish to. The next one is an idea I've used in the classroom several times, and I've tried to adapt it to be online. Now, I use this as comparison, because I find that students make an absolute mountain out of comparison tasks. And in fact, comparison is quite easy. Really, all you're asking them is, what is the same about these things and what is different. And believe it or not, the one on the right-hand side is a hotel. The left-hand side is the psycho set from um, the Universal Studios, I think. But the other one is a hotel, and it's a dog hotel um, in more ways than one, obviously, in Germany, I think. And it really gets the students talking and laughing and whatever. So I've come up with four tasks about it. So I've got um, spot the differences, identify four differences between the hotels and explain them. So they might come up with, for instance, one is obviously um, for dog lovers, which is a bit boring, but at least it's a start. Um, then the next one is write the opening of a short story about one of the hotels, and I've suggested an opening line there. Um, there had to be a mistake. This couldn't possibly be the place. And then um, both hotels are running competitions for a free weekend stay. To win, you just need to write the manager a letter explaining why you're the ideal guest. Choose one and write the letter. And then the next one is, imagine you've stayed in one of the hotels overnight, write a TripAdvisor review for your stay. OK, so that's um, just four ideas there. And obviously, you can do lots more with it. And going forward in the classroom, um, I'm sure you do this already, but I use pictures as a way into comparison, particularly for weaker students. They tend to make a, a massive meal out of comparison, when in actual fact, it can be really quite easy. So there's an idea for you at any level. Now, the next one is, is really intended for higher ability, and I'll talk you through how it works. It's an idea I got um, from somewhere on the internet or some kind person, so I don't, I, I don't lay claim to it being my own idea. And I wish I knew where I'd got it from, and I could, um, I could give you the name. But it, I, it, I call it Beat an Expert. So what you need to do is to get um, a piece of, of a text, a piece of writing, transactional. It can be any, any kind you want. I'm going to use an article here. And then what I, what you, the idea is, is to get them to write it without seeing it. So you give them these prompts. So you are going to read an article about the benefits of side lighting. In it, Caitlin Moran bemoans the following, that she lights many lamps in her house to create warmth, but her family don't notice, that only she ever turns them on, the rest of the family use harsh overhead lights, that it takes her a long time to turn 15 different lamps on and off every day, and that all she wants is for them to live in fluttering lighting. The article is tongue-in-cheek, write one of the paragraphs. Now, obviously, I've aimed this at uh, high ability, because I've used phrases like tongue-in-cheek, and I've used the word bemoans. Obviously, it, you can do it for any level. I find it, it didn't work so well for the weaker ability. They just tended to copy the sentence out and add a few bits to it, rather than really thinking about it in detail. But what I would do then is to get them to write the article, and that could be an online task for one week. And then the following week, I would show them the article, and they have to compare and evaluate their own against the article. And here it is. And it is one of my favorites of all time, actually. So here you go. And this is just, I've made it into a four corner activity, but it's just to show you the, the, the activity, the um, article. So side lighting. Sometimes I imagine myself in a bar in front of an almost empty bottle of whiskey slurring. No one seems to recognize the importance of small, well-placed lamps. I have spent the past 20 years filling each room in the house with perfect pods of warm light. No one else ever touches these lamps. Instead, they all prefer to carelessly activate an overhead pendant, one with a brutal daylight bulb in it, making everyone in the room look both dead and evil. I turn these off. I put on all 15 lamps in the morning, and I turn off all 15 lamps at night. I am essentially a Victorian lamplighter. 
I have a vocation that otherwise died out in this country by 1902, but I just want everyone to have lived a flatteringly lit life. Is that a crime? And somebody I can see has already put something in the open discussion about this. Um, and it is, would they read a different Moran piece first, do we think? I use them a lot anyway, but thinking this would give them a very specific tone and voice to aim for. Yes, that's an excellent idea. I hadn't thought of that. It's a really good way, actually, a really good way of getting them ready for it. Um, most of um, Moran's articles now are for the Sunday Times, so they're behind a paywall, but um, I have got a subscription to it. But yeah, that would be an excellent idea, actually, to find something of a similar tone and maybe look at that the first week and then get them to, to recreate. Um, this, I find, is one of the best texts I've ever used for this very straightforward four-corner technique that, again, I pinched from somebody else. It works well in the classroom, um, particularly the draw it bit, actually. Um, but you could adapt this in the same way as, as um, you know, we've, you've adapted other things for, for working um, and giving them some questions on the four corners to, to use online for remote learning. And then we've got another one, and this is um, another review, but this is another uh, article to use. And this is, you are going to write a review of a restaurant. In it, the reviewer writes about the poor quality of a jacket potato, the poor quality of a replacement jacket potato, the fact that he was still expected to pay for the food despite poor quality and service. The reviewer is angry but reasonable in tone. Write one of the paragraphs in a suitable introduction or conclusion. Now, I did use this in the classroom actually just before um, the lockdown, and it worked brilliantly, actually. They all understood. Um, what they needed to do more than they did for the Moran one, which was which took a little bit longer. But this one worked brilliantly, and also because the review itself is 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 quite um, is quite reasonably written. Um, Joe Tudor said, "I like the four corner activity. Do you have an example of a completed cheat to clarify what students have to do?" I don't with me, I'm afraid. I might have one at school, but if I could just if I just go back to it, um, all I do is crunch it means fines. This is for people who weren't here last week. Um, crunch it, I get them to pick out one word from each line, um, the best word. So the first one, for instance, might be um, imagine, and the second line, bar, and the third line, empty. Um, and that's just to get them into the language. And then criticize it is really self-evident, uh, but you might want to explain it a little bit more. Um, I'm asking them to say how they feel about side lighting, really. So they're evaluating in a way. Transform it in the classroom. I get them to transform it into a poem or something else, some other format, and draw it. The draw it is great. If you, it probably wouldn't work online uh, as, a, as a remote learning, but it works because in a classroom uh, environment, what you get are, di are pictures of different parts of the of the text, and so you can really draw out the fact that texts have different audiences and everybody responds in a different way. Okay. Um, would you do the exercise after the previous activity or instead of? Probably after. I would, I would do the writing activity first. I think actually turning it on its head and writing something yourself before you then evaluate or analyze the real one um, actually pays dividends. Um, I found it has because they understand the task more in terms of what, what language do I need to analyze? Oh. I see they've used that word where I used that word, so their word is probably worthy of analysis. So that, that worked quite well. Um, so that, that was that. And then this one was the screw in my food, and if we think about the review we looked at last week, here's, oh, sorry, gone too early. Um, this is another review of the top 20 from TripAdvisor. It's actually, it, it's actually a good one to use in the classroom for middle ability because it is actually, unlike most of TripAdvisor, reasonably well written. Particularly structurally, it works very well. Um, and I often, use, I often um, do use this as an introduction to structure, actually. So there you go. There's another review for you to use in whichever way you'd like. And then on to my um, bestest of the week, actually. I happen to have, and I'll show you one, I have some home management books, two volumes of, from the 1950s. And I think they were my husband's um, mother's, I think. And I use them a lot in the classroom. They have some wonderful passages on. And this is the planning the household routine. And I thought it just might be a bit of a hoot anyway, for those of you in lockdown at the moment, to see whether you are family one, family two, or family three. Um, 
and I came up with some tasks around them. And this is the one that I intended really for adult learners, but it might be quite fun in the class for, for, for school age students as well. But these are the tasks I came up with. Obviously, these families are very stereotypical of the late 1950s or Yes, I like that, comparing with, with, I haven't got my PowerPoint up in front of me at the moment, but yes, the idea of comparing with the current one. Um, use the daily routine as a prompt for a short story and choose one of the following opening sentences I came up with. Um, Today's the day was my first waking thought. Um, using similar language, write a suggested daily routine for a year 10 student. A uh, great comparison opportunity with that and a Nigella Lawson recipe, yeah, absolutely. Um, have a look in newspapers, that, that was my idea, to see if you can find a modern, modern equivalent of this advice, compare the ideas and perspectives of the two texts. I was going to have, and I held myself back from, I was going to have write your own um, household routine, um, but I think that's a little bit awkward at the moment because we don't know what people's family circumstances are. Um, and yes, I like it. Somebody said I have an all-male class. I wonder how they'll react. I have used it with all-male classes, actually, and we had fantastic discussions about it. Um, it went on for ages. They, they, they thought it was, and there were some really interesting lifestyle ideas in there that, that they hadn't really even sort of heard of. So the idea of lighting a fire and that kind of thing was completely alien. It was really quite good fun. Um, and what I thought, if we do language next week, I will, I've got a couple of absolute classics in there. Um, in the book that I can share some more ideas about. There's even a whole page on how to behave on a date and how to get, and it's all about making the man feel masterful and powerful and how to get them to pay. So very interesting. Um, but yes, somebody's Kate um, Aprilina's book could probably find something in a modern parenting book or website about routines. Yeah, it would be fantastic, wouldn't it, to find something to go with that. So I think that that's your treat of the week, actually. I thought it was rather wonderful. And I mean, one thing for you is how many are following these kind of routines? I think we ought to know who is getting up early to air the beds and um, get the fire ready. Um, and somebody said this would be a fab activity to help us with 7B for language. I totally agree. Yes, if you could, if you could get the, it's very simple for, and straightforward for comparing as well because you've got the idea of the, the imperatives in there. You've got some really obvious language and tone there to go at, so it would be great. So that was my lovely one. Um, moving on, so we don't run out of time. Um, ideas to share again. You've got the the um, the um, email address there, and please do. If you adapt any of my ideas, please do send them back. That would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and also send any requests for, for next week. Um, literature ideas. Just let's go through a few of those. I hope I don't get cut off again. I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to get some technical help on that. Um, Last week, if you were with me, I showed you the um, Macbeth idea for how to get the plot through to them for part B questions. And this is the, I just wanted to share with you here, this is the Jekyll and Hyde version. So the idea for those who weren't here last week is that they fill the white space. There's their exam question in the middle, and you can put whatever question you want in. And they then fill the white space with links to very specific parts of the plot. So, for instance, they might underline um, Utterson and Enfield are taking a walk and choose to link that to the idea of Utterson as a loyal friend. So as many links as they make, but the links have to be very specific. They can't just underline the whole chapter. It has to be a very specific part. Okay, so that's that one. Um, I just wanted to share with you something. And my, my version of this on, on the screen now, the middle model paragraph has bled a bit to the right-hand side, but it won't be like that when you get the PowerPoint. I think it's just a, a, um, a, um, a formatting error there. Um, now, this is, a model, this is a model paragraph from a new resource that we'll be sharing with you, hopefully early next week, which is a PowerPoint of how to answer um, literature A and B questions for the 19th century and we've done one for Jekyll and Hyde and one for A Christmas Carol and it ends with model paragraph activities but I just wanted to share this with you anyway I do this a lot and basically the idea is all they have to do is draw a line from short embedded quotations to where they are in my model paragraph so they have to find those things on the right hand side in the paragraph it then becomes a it then becomes a model for them to write the next paragraph or to write more or to improve it. Or what you can do with higher ability is you can leave out one of those um, 
six things and they spot what's been left out and they have to um, put it in. And yes, somebody's put, you could leave a blank space and you could also adapt this for extract. I think that's, they're still talking about the previous one. Are you, Nicola? Still talking about the previous one. But anyway, model paragraphs I do a lot of. And there's another one here, which is a poetry one. And this, I appreciate, is a poem that isn't in. This was an unseen one. Um, this was Duffy's war photographer um, poem, which I think is on the AQA. Um, on the AQA anthology, not on ours, but it just to give you an idea of how you can use it, okay? And I usually get them as, on this one to finish the first paragraph and to write the next one using the first part that I've done as a model, okay? So that that um, that has gone down exceptionally well. Um, yep, somebody's put you could use colour to demonstrate the different elements. Exactly, that's what they do though. I do I do the um, you could demonstrate one and then get them to do their own. Okay. Um, some people say their screen is lagging behind. I'm sorry about that. I think there's a big increase of people using this platform at the moment. I hope that's okay. Moving on then. Character collages is something I do all the time, and this is kind of an extra to the one last week about the biscuit. So this is just a bit of fun, really, a bit of creativity. We don't have to all the time. I mean, there's lots of discussions online about whether there's any point learning anything new now, whether we should just be going over things that they already knew, no refreshing. So this is a kind of refreshing idea. Um, if Sheila was a holiday destination, what destination would she be and why? So would she be Aya Napa? Probably not, actually. Or Ibiza? Or would she be Scarborough? Um, or Skegness? Or, I don't know, the south of France? If Sheila were a car, what type of car would she be and why, etc.? Um, I use these a lot, and they do come up with quite amusing ideas, um, particularly about the celebrities, um, and usually I've never heard of them. Um, so if Sheila were a celebrity, what would she be famous for and why? Okay. So I hope that's okay, an interesting one. The final one is more for hireability, and this is something, again, I pinched off somebody on the internet a while ago, so I don't pretend it's mine. but this is my version of it. Now, this is just the bottom part of a resource that I can send you the whole of. But it's um, an article about Romeo and Juliet. And the boxes there are, um, they read the academic article about the play that, or book that they're studying. And then they magpie it. So what ideas can you steal? I'd have much bigger boxes than this. This was just an example. And what vocabulary does the writer use that might be useful in your analytical essays? Which parts of the play could you link to this? So could you make some direct links? And as you can see above that, I have a space down the right-hand side while they're reading. Um, so they, they, they fill in um, links while they're reading. And then look at the opening of the play. How does this article help to explain why Shakespeare started with this street scene? If you do do... Romeo and Juliet, this is a really good article, and I've left you the, the link there to it. And then I have a longer task. Is Romeo and Juliet predominantly about violence? Use evidence from the play in your answer. So I'm moving them up a stage from the, the classic exam question, and I'm trying to bridge the, a little bit of the gap there, sort of pre-A-level style of question, really, that gets them to critique. Um, somebody said, I'm sure people are making real suge great suggestions, but I can't see any text activity. So either you've all not got anything to say or, yeah, oh, people are writing notes. Joe Tudor's writing notes. Excellent. I love the idea. Um, okay, so that's a really good idea. And I did find uh, quite a few on Romeo and Juliet on the Royal Shakespeare Company site and the National Theatre site. They had program notes and things that could be used for that, right, like a literary critic. And I think that is something that you could usefully do online uh, as a, um, a remote learning activity, and I think it would really benefit higher level students to take their study a little bit further while they're, while they're at home. I think that would be a good use of their time. Okay, next slide. I need to move along. Poetry project ideas. Now, they, these are the ideas. Um, you can't read them very well probably at the moment, but you'll get this whole PowerPoint so you can have a look. These are the ideas that led to the prelude um, 
model at the start, okay, and I did this as a long-term homework project, but I've also set it now for my students. I think you have to be careful about what group you set it for, because again, you're assuming levels of ability and home life that enable them to do projects like this, but I just thought I'd share it. And I've had some of these before. This was one I found on the internet because I couldn't get into school to get mine, but it's a 3D tunnel book, and there's the prelude uh, model, which I had, so that I was just sharing those if you wanted to. Um, oh, somebody's just shared to say the RSC are doing Macbeth next Thursday. Yeah, the RSC have got their plays live, um, not live, but they've got them um, going out once a week now, haven't they? So that's useful. Okay, let's move on. And it's tea break time. It's your time to share ideas, soothe each other with kind words, or just say hello. So we're going to break out, go into breakout groups now. I'll be in one, Pam will be in another, Liz will be in another, and Mike also from Pearson's will be in another. So it's an opportunity for uh, that they'll gather the ideas and come back to me with anything you're saying. I'm really sorry about the connectivity issues this week, and I hope we can keep, keep you with us for the next 15 minutes. So here we go into breakout groups. Thank you. I thought I'd stop sharing. It's What's nice. happened? Hello. <laughs> no, we did this last week, didn't we, at this point? And then we all... Hello. Um, Julie, I was going to say, some people were saying about how um, there's still, they're still time management was an issue, and uh, yeah. somebody recommended a website. So I'm just going to put it in this box here. Lovely. And it's apparently this, somebody's got this really good website about time management, so I'm just going to put that in there. Okay, that's useful, excellent. That's one thing. And the other thing, just to say one other thing, was about the students that aren't engaging with it. That was the other thing. Yeah. People who haven't got laptops and things. Someone said yes. some of their students are doing essays on their phones. That's it, really. Right. Things like that. Okay. Liz, what about you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, quite a variety of different experiences. A lot of teachers in our group were struggling with the sheer volume of marking and trying to do the feedback. Um, and students were submitting work in a photo, um, and we had a really useful um, talk about um, then transforming that into a Word document, so then you can just add ticks to it, so that, that helps there a bit quicker. Um, Pobble was mentioned, class charts was mentioned, and send my homework was mentioned as, as resources that would help um, with time. Okay. Mike? Um, fairly similar, I think. If I hope I represent the room four, okay. The questions were on engagement um, and the resource and platform, similar to what you're talking about, Liz. Um, again, Google Classroom, uh, Show My Homework is one that's popularly uh, being used at the moment. Um, Show My Homework. The Teams as well. Some issues, you know, people who can contact. So sometimes, uh, you know, for security reasons or um, people can't do the videos, they can't call up people. And one really good thing that was shared, and a um, lot of other people picked up on, was the English and Media Centre's yeah. um, website, and Sarah shared that, so thank you so much for that. I won't use your full name, because we might record this, but Sarah, thank you. And a lot of people picked up and already went on and found some really good um, uh, resources there, so that was fantastic. Okay, thank you, lovely. In my room, there was concern about how engagement, again, about student engagement, yeah. particularly FE, in terms of, um, you know, they were halfway through um, paper two when the lockdown happened, and now the students just aren't engaging. And I think that is a difficult one. One little tip I got at school today, which worked, and I, I don't know whether how many of you could use it, but we use Show My Homework. And one teacher had something like three responses out of 30. So she took the, um, instead, of, instead of emailing to say, I haven't had 27 responses, she emailed to say, I've had so many fantastic responses. I think it, they call it the nudge approach, don't they? So actually saying, I, I've had, thank you so much. I've had so many wonderful um, responses. I can't wait to have a look at them and rank them all together. And she had six within half an hour. <laughs> so that's a thought. I think it's that nudge of everybody thinks nobody's doing it. And in fact, we need to make students, some students realize that in fact, a lot of people are doing it. But I appreciate that is only for people who are looking at it and can't be bothered. It isn't for people who can't engage. And I do appreciate that, that that's different. Um, several people said that they had people who had inadequate technology and internet in order to be able to access PowerPoints, etc. And I think that is a difficult one. Um, and the only thing I could suggest on there was that, um, 
pe uh, you know, to send it out in booklet form, to actually physically send it out. But if somebody can share in the open discussion what they do in those cases, that would be really useful. Um, another another thing came up was teaching new material versus teaching refreshing old, and um, what I do with that case, I'm teaching Jekyll and Hyde remotely, and I am getting them just uh, my 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 aim is just that they know the plot at the end really, so they're reading the the chapter or reading a summary if they are lower ability and doing some multi choice questions on it. The idea being that they just know the the plot at the end. No, which I think is useful. Um, okay, and I, I did make a note of a few other things that I'm going to check out for next week. Somebody wanted a list of resources. I did point out on mine that even Teacher is free at the moment, actually. An awful lot of teaching um, online resources have become free, and the English and Media Center is a good place to start. But I can certainly start getting together a list of things that were free. Okay. Um, and at the moment, I think people are talking about Microsoft Teams. Is it reliable? Um, my school uses it, but I haven't had much success with getting students to engage in it, I must admit. Um, I've been mainly on Show My Homework, which I've found useful enough. But I had way more um, take up when I recorded a PowerPoint this week. But then again, that'll only work for those who can access PowerPoint. But I think they were watching on their phones, like a little YouTube video. So for some reason, they liked that. I think hearing my voice, it felt more real than something on Share My Homework. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. And somebody is going to try Loom, which is also a good idea. Here is the first resource shared. Here's my nudge technique, actually. Here's a lovely resource we had sent in earlier from a viewer. Um, and it's some activities based around television programs. Okay, now you're going to get this, I think, as a separate PowerPoint, or you can use it from this. Um, a lovely lady called Kerry Ann. Again, I won't use her surname in case we record this, but she very kindly sent that in, and we're going to share that with you. So it's based on sort of a, a restaurant idea of um, mild, hot, and extra hot, and each one's got three tasks, and they're really quite creative, which is great. Okay, so that's there for you to share and any more you've got to share please do send in on that full English email address and we'll get it out there to you and, and as I said earlier any of mine that you adapt it'd be really great to see them being adapted and shared around um, would be really helpful at this point in time so if you've got any other ideas as I said there there's the email address again okay the full English at pearson.com that was Pam's idea it's a lovely name there easy to remember and then I'll just whistle through the rest of the slides um, the next date is 30th of April, and we're going to go for language, so we're going to split it in two, and we'll go, we'll go for language next week, and that means we can get more people signed on, and literature the week after, if that's okay, and we will publicise that. Um, any suggestions, please do pop it up in the next couple of minutes. What more can we do to help? Obviously, just keep asking. Um, I did do this last week, the home learning scheme of work for Jekyll and Hyde I'm doing at the moment. The PowerPoint lessons for Jekyll and Hyde, Inspector Corps, Christmas Carol and Poetry are done. We are just waiting for the technology to record the scripts over them. And they're great. They are a whole PowerPoint that takes you through how to, for, how to plan for an exam question. There's a model paragraph that, that they can annotate and there are answers and they can stop the PowerPoint at whenever they want to do the work. So it's about half an hour PowerPoint if you listen to it all the way through in one go, but I would imagine there's about um, two or three hours work in there. So once they're out, you can set those. And as I've said before, we've got a new scheme of work for Core and Boy, if anybody's interested in looking at that to maybe do in the future. It's a really good book to do um, for year nine upwards. It's excellent. Um, then there's our, our new text for English literature, which again are well worth looking at in, if, if you want to change text in the future. We've got the new poetry anthology, and it's all based around diversity. Oh, somebody's doing Coran Ball with Year 9 next year. Excellent, Laura. So get hold of the scheme of work. I'd really like your views on it. Okay, I, I find it really fun to write. Where do we find the PowerPoint lessons? They're not out there yet, but next week I'll tell you where to find them, and I'm sure we'll be publicizing that. Um, secondary resources there, there's ideas, and York Notes. Obviously, um, it isn't necessary to purchase Pearson resources. There are resources available everywhere, but if you want to get discount, you can book using our code. 
um, diversity con conference um, still still there for second of October. Who knows what we'll be doing in October? And there's Claire again, just to remind you. And I think at the end we have a feedback slide. Hopefully that's the new one. Um, and I'm just checking to see whether we've got any more live discussion before we end it, because I think we've got two minutes to go. It's been really lovely having you all with us again. I think we've had 65-odd people with us today, which is fantastic. Um, hopefully next week, if we just do language, I'll focus it as well, and I'll do a bit on Key Stage 3, language-wise, and because I've got, actually, I've got something really good that I can share with you that I adapted for somebody else, so for Key Stage 3, that does work for uh, remote learning as well. Okay, the feedback survey, as Pam said, please do it to inform us for future sessions. If there's something you don't like, um, if there's something you'd like, please do let us know. Sorry I'm a bit rambly and a bit hesitant at times. It is really weird sitting here with um, the full Britney Spears on and talking to people you can't see, but it's been lovely. So thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>